Seems like everywhere that I go lately, I'm getting a question or comment about how the real estate market seems to be slowing down or cooling off. In episode 51 of the Inside Real Estate Show, I'll share with you what my exact response is to people when they ask me that question or give me a comment similar to that. The short answer is no, it's not cooling off and slowing down. This is the Inside Real Estate Show, where we give you the insight behind the information so you can make smart home buying, home selling, and real estate investing decisions. And now your host, author, speaker, broker, and investor, Darren Persinger. It really feels like anyone who's not actively in the real estate market that's trying to buy or sell right now is um, has an opinion that they've heard from someone else's opinion that the market is slowing down or cooling off. Now, keep in mind that I can't speak for the real estate market worldwide or nationwide, and every real estate market has a real estate market inside of that real estate market. For example, you might be looking at a whole county. Inside of the county, you have the towns. One town might be really hot. It might be a seller's market. Another town in that county might be a buyer's market. And then inside of that town, as we zoom into as we drill down, inside of that town, you have real estate markets based upon uh, property type, condos, single family residential. You have real estate markets based upon price points. Um, some homes between three hundred dollars to $400,000 might be a seller's market. Homes over a certain price point, there might be an actual buyer's market going on in there. And then in specific neighborhoods or communities, maybe homes closer to a school, further away from a school, maybe homes in a brand new subdivision versus homes in an older, uh, more established subdivision might have different markets going on. So just bear that in mind that when people are asking, how's the real estate market? Uh, is it slowing down, cooling off? Every market could have a completely different market going on inside of that market. So the way that I'm answering that question in person when I get that, hey, is the market slowing down, cooling off? It seems to not be as hot as it once was. Here's how I answer that. One, if you're hearing that from other real estate agents, that could be true. The reason why a real estate agent might be saying that the real estate market is slowing down or cooling off is throughout history, experience has shown that when the real estate market goes up, real estate agents chase it or people in general get into real estate sales. They look at real estate sales as being a quick, easy buck. So when real estate home prices go up and it turns into a seller's market generally, what you have is more people going and getting their real estate license trying to chase that gold rush. What that ends up doing is having more supply than demand. There's more real estate agents than the number of transactions for there to take place. So when real estate agents say the market's slowing down or cooling off, What's really going on is they're talking about their specific business. There's less transactions for them to do personally because there's so many more real estate agents actually in the market. You go back four or five years ago, there was a certain number of real estate transactions taking place but there was also less real estate agents. So it felt like a real estate agent was busier and they could do more, they could have more production under their belt. But now because everyone thinks it's a good time to get into real estate and it's fairly easy to get your real estate license, there's more and more agents coming into the market every single month, which actually makes it harder for a real estate agent to make a living to have a successful career selling real estate because they're competing with so many more real estate agents. So that's the first thing. Always take what you're hearing um, with a grain of salt based upon who you're hearing that from. So I, I get why most real estate agents would say it's slowing down or cooling off. It feels like that to them. The second place that you might be hearing that from is from someone trying to sell their home or maybe you've picked up that opinion yourself because you're looking around your neighborhood and signs that used to come up and go down really fast because homes were selling very quickly. It seems like it's taking a little bit longer to sell. But let me explain to you what's actually going on there. Let's use a couple of charts to use a baseline on why it would feel like things are slowing down and what's actually going on. As I already spoke about with real estate agents, a supply and demand issue, no difference, any type of economics, including real estate sales, it's a supply and demand issue. The reason why it's a seller's market right now is there's more demand than supply. There's a lot of buyers, not very many homes for sale. 
and that's what creates a seller's market. In fact, it's such an extreme seller's market if we go back to January 2016 up until now. On average, homes are selling in Snohomish County for 101.2% of the list price. 101.2% of the list price. So what that means is if a home is listed for $500,000, a buyer is going to pay $510,000 for that home. Now, if we look at King County, starting way back in January of 2016 up until now, home prices are selling for 102.9%, basically 103% of the list price. So what that means in King County is that if a home is listed for $500,000, it's selling for $515,000. The reason why it's important to know those numbers, list price to sales price ratio, is because it tells you a lot of what is going on in a buyer's mindset when we look at supply and demand and why a seller might feel like the market is cooling off. Let me explain. If I know as a buyer that I'm going to have to pay 2%, 3% more than what the actual list price is. And I see a home that's listed for a certain price and I'm going, okay, I have to pay more than that. But you're listing it way too high. You're over listing it. It's priced already above what the market will bear. I'm thinking to myself, I already have to overpay and now you want me to overpay even more. Home buyers are going to refuse to overpay on something that's overpriced. So if a home seller and their real estate agent are looking at the real estate market in a comparable home nearby sold for $400,000, and they go, okay, if that one sold for $400,000, let's list ours for $420,000, that price jump is too high. Because most buyers are not thinking, I get to negotiate in this market, I get to come in and offer lower. They're thinking, I have to come in and offer more. So if your list price is outside of that 2-3% window, you listed it way too high. And that's why homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer. It's starting to feel like the real estate market is cooling off. But in reality, there's still a ton of buyers that want to get into the real estate market right now and that want to buy. They're pre-qualified. They're pre-approved. They're ready. They're willing. They're able. They want to buy. They're just not going to overpay for something that's already overpriced. So recapping episode 51, is the market slowing down? Is it cooling off? If you're a real estate agent, I get why it might feel that way. But if you're a real estate agent, be careful on how you're projecting on how you feel or what's going on with your real estate business to what your clients uh, need to know about the real estate market. If you're a seller, just be careful about how you're pricing your home. Even though it's hot, even though it's a seller's market, even though uh, buyers are overpaying by 2 to 3% in a lot of market locations, you still can't overprice your home. You have to be in that 2 to 3% window. If you miss the mark in this market, even by a little bit, that's going to hurt you more than if you missed the mark uh, a few years ago, actually. So be careful when pricing your home and make sure that you're still pricing it in the market and not way out in front of the market. Buyers aren't going to overpay on something that's overpriced. And if you're a buyer, there might be some opportunity for you to go and take a look at some homes that have been sitting on the market for two weeks, three weeks, maybe for a month, and go back and not actually have to overpay for that property, not pay 103% of list price. You might be able to come in at asking price and do some closing costs or even come under list price. So keep that in mind if you're a buyer out there. There might actually be some opportunity. You have to circle back around and see what's available, what's been on the market for a little while, and that might be uh, an opportunity to get a deal. Thank you for watching or listening to episode 51 of the Inside Real Estate Show. Make sure that you like and subscribe to whatever platform that you're watching or listening to this on. And if you want to catch up on past episodes, just head to InsideRealEstateShow.com. And if you have questions, you can email me, Darren at PersingerGroup.com. And I'll answer your question in an email back to you or possibly use your question as an opportunity to answer it in an episode of Inside Real Estate Show. So if you have questions, go ahead and email them to me, Darren, at PersingerGroup.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next episode. This is the Inside Real Estate Show, where we give you the insight behind the information so you can make smart home buying, home selling, and real estate investing decisions.